Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Dr. Ina McBride, and we have another beautiful study here. We are looking at the power of the virtuous woman, and we're going to look at that, and we're going to get into, you know, a little conversation about marriage and about love and about, you know, cultivating a good home um, as we talk about the woman in the Bible, the very first Isha whom modern day tongue other than the Everett tongue or the Hebrew tongue identifies as Eve, but we want to talk, call her Hava or Shava. Hallelujah. And so we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about her function and her role in the function and role of the woman in general. Before we get started, let us begin with prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this opportunity to share, to study, to know, to grow. Bless this teaching and let it be a baruka unto those who hear. In the mighty name of Yahushua HaMashiach, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us continue. Now, I want to look immediately at the word Hava. Some say Hava. Uh, some will say Chava. Some will say Chava. I'm just going to say Chava. All right. That one's what I'm leaning more towards. As the language is being restored, you know, people have different ways that they decide to pronounce it, um, but it comes from H2331 in the Strong's Concordance, and most people just know her as Eve, um, the first woman, uh, the first created being from another being, hallelujah, and I want to note that first created being from another being and that within itself has a lot that could be investigated and gone into but I'll just leave it right there as a nugget to really uh meditate on and let father bring that to fruition in you about the woman or the woman hallelujah let us investigate the beautiful purpose of this name and as it was given after the fall, prior to this, she was simply the woman. But we're going to investigate the beauty of both. What does this have to do with virtue? And what does this have to do with the virtuous woman? A lot. There's a lot in the name. And one thing about Hebrew is that it's functional. It's good because it's functional. Good means functions well or functions correctly. The opposite of good is evil, which is dysfunction. All right. Genesis chapter one and two, um, the woman was referred to as just the woman, the Isha. Um, it means feminine. It has the root H36 and it has H582. The irregular plural is na nashim, um, and it is used in the same wide sense as H five A two, a woman. Um, it also can be reported as an adulteress. Um, each every female, many none, one together, wife, woman. Um, these are things that might often be unexpressed in the English translation. So let's just remember with a language as deep as Hebrew and even with other languages, when you translate into English, you lose things. Uh, when you translate, period, you lose things. All you can do is go with the next best word that means almost the same thing. But there's a deeper, deeper uh, meaning here with the Isha. Hallelujah. So when we look at the ish, right? And if we go back here, we'll see each letter. Aleph, Shin, Hey, Isha. 
Aleph, Shin, Hey. We see that same progression here. Aleph, Shin, Hey. Aleph means strong, power, leader. So whoever says women can't lead, yeah, you don't know what a Isha is. You're lost. You need to go back into scripture. Because when he created the Ish or the male, an Ish and male in Hebrew are two totally different words. And we can kind of look at that. He created a pair. He created an Ish and an Isha. Right? Both were called to be leaders. And we're going to kind of dig into that after we look at uh, the Ish here. So we got Aleph meaning strong, power, and leader. And then we've got shin, meaning sharp, press, eat, two. And then we've got, hallelujah, hey, look, reveal, breath. And there's all different combinations, which is where we, we get into, well, you can't do it like that because, you know, it could mean a variety of things. That also leads to the beauty of it because it opens up the revelation and the function um, of the term. All right. So here. We have the strong, powerful leader that sharpens the revelation. That's one way we could look at it. Uh, iron sharpening iron, meaning the woman who her function is to sharpen, encourage, exhort. Sharpen is just a figurative word used here, but nevertheless a functional word. Help the male be more accurate in what he's doing. Um, help the male carry the burden of what he's doing better. And we'll we'll dig it out even more um, here. But the woman was given to sharpen and strengthen the revelation of the man. And the revelation of the man was given is that he was going to lead. He was going to have dominion. He was going to, you know, reproduce and have the earth as his domain. That's a lot to swaddle. It's quite a big task. The Isha was given to the man as a help meet for him to help meet his needs to sharpen him and make him more accurate in the revelation of his duty as a man so therefore she was given the great responsibility to lead with him and to be one with him how be it i think it's shaul talks about the mystery of messiah in the kahal or the assembly is the same as with the husband and the wife the man and the woman because here, in this sense, when we talk about Adam and Eve, we're talking about a husband and a wife. Hallelujah. We're going to keep moving. So now, let's take a moment and let's look at the fact that she not only was titled and given the function of woman or Isha, she also was given the function of Chawa. And so, what is that? Chava. Where are we going with that? Let's talk about it. Let's review the prophecy that Adam heard. And in his wisdom, he gave her a second level of spiritual protection which is her name, her function. Why did he do that? What is what is he doing here? 
In all things, in Yah, every word brings forth a function. So let's review that in Genesis 3 and 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Now this is Yah with his prophecy that he's given out personally to Shawa or to the woman, Isha, at that time about her and the serpent. So we already know the woman and the serpent, uh, as they would say on the street, they beefing <laughs> because he set her up and she not going to forget who did that, the serpent, right? <laughs> We can't let that go. We can't just sweep that under the rug. Oh no, 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 no. Hear that out there, sisters. We 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 got to hold hold it down in the home. We gotta keep our our man protected. And we gotta protect the seed. Come on. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Mm, take it for what it says. The serpent got a seed. All right. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And everybody points to this as a, the prophecy of Messiah, but not only is it looking at Messiah, but we're talking about all of creation as a whole. There is a function for the Isha, and there was a special function. In the beginning for Chawa. Oh, she had work to do. She had work to do. And you can see where there is even some 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 possibility. Not saying that she didn't do well with a loss happening for Chawa not being as protective as maybe she could have been over Abel. Mm. That's deep right there too. But we're not gonna get off, we're not gonna get off track. But as a mother, you need to watch. You need to watch all your children. You need to watch what's going on. You need to be aware. Hallelujah. Because all seed may not be good seed. And of course, Cain was a seed of the serpent. And people don't like that. They don't like it when they hear stuff like that. It's like, oh, it is what it is. <laughs> he was the first murderer, man. Like, come on. He wasn't about trying to live righteously before Yah. And I'm sure there were some warning signs out there for Chawa. And she saw the differences between Avail or Abel and Cain. But, you know, sometimes the unthinkable things that people could do, your children included, we don't want to see that. But Chawa had a job. I'm not criticizing. I'm pointing to something. I'm showing something. I'm magnifying something. I'm not making up something that's not there either. As the Ish, as the Isha, sorry. Right? I'm going back here. You are to sharpen and strengthen the revelation of the man. Hallelujah. To lead with him. Look in the hay. Reveal. Hallelujah. There's going to be revelation. There's got to be some looking going on with the Isha, the woman, and her function. So much is here. Like, we can really go deep with this. I'm trying to be very uh, strategic as I'm going through. Just This is just to get you started, all right? as your function as an Isha. And then I would also encourage everyone to look up the function of their name because Chawa had a specific function. And thankfully, the father blessed her with another seed. 
hallelujah. Because through the awful circumstances of Cain, she lost both of her sons. Mm. But she didn't see the depth of the enmity. She didn't see it. But there's an enmity here that Chawa eventually got the revelation. And now I'm giving it to all of us as women of Yah. Let's understand the revelation. Because not only did he give it to Shawa, this was to every woman. So she, we are now co-laborers if we're in this walk. And co-leaders with the man in our home if we're married. Or with Messiah in general if we're not. We're co-laborers in a spiritual battle for dominion and territory until the revelation of Messiah. Through Foychawa, it was through both her and Adam's lineage. So Adam means man or mankind. Adam derives from the Hebrew now, Adama, meaning the ground or earth. Abaya took Adam from the Adama, dust of the ground, ground earth. Adam, mankind. All right. So we see here. Dama, Aleph, Dalit, Mim, Hey. Let's not move too fast and let's look at Genesis 1 and 26. Because then Elohim said, Let us make man, Adam, in our image after our likeness and let them. And that's the key part, because a lot of people think it's just men, but it says, let them. So we're talking about Adam, and we're talking about Isha. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over all the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And in Adam was also the woman. So when you're talking about Adams, you're talking about mankind. It's just that Adam retained the name, the only given name, as you see here, the father of mankind. So Adam meant man or mankind, which is inclusive of the woman. When Adam, mankind, meaning both, they are in the likeness of Yah. Adam has dominion. Adam was given power to name everything. Adam has the ability to make choices. Adam was given the ability to, to make more Adams, right? Reproduce, multiply. So, why this prophecy with Chawa? In Genesis 3 and 20, Chawa was given after after the prophecy given to her. And this is just a different view of Chawa in the paleo, not, excuse me, it's both the paleo and the pictorial and the modern Hebrew. Okay? Chawa. So in Chawa, we have Chet, Vav, He. Chet is a picture of a wall, letter, or window. Wa is a picture of a tent peg. He is a picture of a man with raised hands. So you have now Chawa, a wall of support. But notice a wall, a protection, a barrier. Do you see why he went from just Ish, Isha, excuse me, 
as a co-leader sharpener to now know Shawa, you have got to function as a protection for me. A wall, a support for the man doing his work. He prophesied out to her, you can't fall anymore. You can't, you can't let Hasatan beguile you. We we end this to win it. We gotta stay together. Do you see how deep this is? Her functionality, it was always the same, but he brought it to light fully. Because she could have been sharp and protected right from the beginning when the serpent went. But she only was really walking in her understanding as a co-leader, not the sharp revelation, not the hey, not the look. She, Isha, was not seeing it. But Chawa, moving forward, Chawa saw it. We don't see any other instances where Chawa continued to stumble, which is something that Father is showing. When you repent, you repent. She became that wall of support for Adam to do his work. A wall of support for man doing his work. Look at the beauty of that. Look at the beauty of that. So, if we look at in the picture, Chawa is man's helper, help me, which was in 2 and 18, which was before the, for the uh, prophecy. So, I won't just say Chawa there. I will say uh, Isha, because he specifically, I believe he specifically named Chawa to reiterate to her her function and to bring to light to her even the more her function. So helper, help me in Genesis 2 and 18 is another word that we're investigating. All right. It's Strong's H5826. Ezer, Ezer. And it means surround, protect, and aid. See, in Genesis 2 and 18, if we look look at that, it says, then Elohim said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I shall make a helper suited to him. He told Adam this. Adam had inquired, why do I not have a helper? a surrounder, a protector, an aid. And we won't go into this Ion, Zion, Resh, because that's a lot right there, especially with the I. Look for me. You are the lookout for the male. You and him are supposed to be back to back, fighting through this together. Not fighting and stabbing each other. That's not going to work. Fighting and helping. Eve is the first contact with the serpent. Mm, mm, mm. Isha. Isha. Woman. And see, because she had come from Adam... We know Adam had been in existence earlier. How long he had been in existence alone, we don't know. But we know that she was definitely the more naive of the two. Isha. But through her experience, Chawa came forward. See, now I fail, but now I'm just saying I'm a surround, I'm protect, I'm a aid. Nah, you not getting through again because I see you. Do you see this eye over here? You see this eye in? Come on. As the one man, the Isha, in your home, if you have a husband, you got to be the front line of defense. You got to see the devil when he coming. <laughs> you got to be like, yeah, no. 
Yeah, no, it's gonna stop right here with me. I'm gonna check you, correct you, and send you on your way, Satan. Get the hints. Not in my home. No, you not you no, baby. Mm -mm. Not here. This is more than just knowing words. This is about knowing and understanding my function mm. as a mother and Isha. And as a wife, a child. Because even though she fell, Chawa lay down an example. Don't keep falling. Hold your position. And Hasatan knew not to even come back around to her no more. He had already accomplished what he wanted to accomplish, so he wasn't going to come back in that way. He came back to wreak havoc through Cain. And again, she ain't see him. Watch your kids. Watch everything. And this doesn't mean that you got to destroy. You just got to see the devil and how he moving. And you got to let him know, not today. <laughs> not today, Satan. We not. No, we not. You're not. Not up in my house. You not. Taking authority over everything that's not like the kingdom, as it said in 2 Corinthians 10, I believe, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in Yah, pulling down every stronghold in the mind. Cain needed a conversation because his mind was all over the place. And as a mother, and I believe we got that, that eye in, that eye. We can see it. Mm -mm, let me come, come over here and let me talk to you. Let me deal with the devil that's trying to run all through your mind because he got to move out. I'm going to bring them thoughts subject right now. Let me lay some hands. <laughs> and no, this doesn't mean that you can control everything. But let me tell you, you can bring spirit subject. Hallelujah. Oh, we can. And that is not to be underestimated. And that is not to be played with or resisted. Fight up in your homes, Isha's. We got to be grounded in scripture and grounded in our understanding and grounded in our function because this is a war. Let me tell you something. The enemy not going to fight fair. If you see how Cain was born, he was born right into the family. Woo, people don't like to hear stuff like this. Household. Guess what? If you're not getting all your household delivered, then all your household not going to walk in the covenant and in the promises. And it is a personal choice for people to be delivered. But I have to deal with it first and see it. The Ayan, the Zion, the Resh. I have to deal with it. As the Isha and the Chawa. I got to function. I got to see. And then I got to nourish. Because the Zion is to cut, nourish food. There's a lot in this. This is deep. I may have to make a part two. But it's so very, very important not to just have head knowledge with this. But to understand the function. Now, I'm not trying to make you a Chawa. I'm saying she laid down and she was given this name as an exemplar. And she had some failures as an exemplar. So we shouldn't look at failures as just, oh, you know, learn the lesson. Mm, I'm going to say it again. Learn the lesson. Don't just see the failure and then think you better and puff yourself up in pride. Learn the lesson. Be on the lookout for Hasatan and protect, surround, aid your husband if you're married. Aid Messiah if you're single. Be on the lookout because you are his bride and he's going to have things for you to do and he's going to assign you and have you attending to the needs in his body. Oh, you don't get to get away because you're a single woman. 
You're still an Isha. Still a Chawa. Because you're his bride. Still got a function. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go back here. Um, it is so important in these times to understand the functionality of words and to understand the practicality and the application of the words. I hope you've enjoyed this study. I won't move forward. This is where we're going to stop off and I will make a part two just to kind of come in and to build on these gold nuggets that we dug out. But until later, much ahava and shalom. May the Ruach HaKodesh keep you, impart in you, and give you further revelation. And may the Almighty Yahushua HaMashiach return and find his faith in the earth and most of all in each and every one of you as you have partaken of this study. Hallelujah. All esteem to the Most High. Amen.